Hello and welcome to Silence, a podcast where women get really honest about surviving and thriving in what often feels like a man's world. My guests are wonder women from the field of science, technology, engineering and mathematics or STEM, where inclusivity and diversity can be a real problem. I know this only too well as a female Southeast Asian mechanical engineer. I'm kind of a minority within a minority. I'm Dr. Shanice O'Mara, an engineer turned broadcaster. Throughout my career, I've worked on and reported on some cutting edge technology and innovation. And through my TV work, I've met some incredibly inspiring women from a diverse range of STEM fields. Talking to these exceptional ladies has often left me feeling empowered, hopeful and excited about life. I believe silence will enrich you too. Every week, a woman in STEM shares her unique experiences with absolutely no pressure in having to promote her accomplishments or guard her impressive reputation, because I've come to realize that everyone is just way more open and relaxed when they're anonymous. So I deliberately disguise my guest voices so that we're just connecting as human beings rather than human doings. It's my hope that you really relate to what we chat about today. If so, please do subscribe to Silence and maybe even rate and review the show. I'd love to have your feedback. This week, my guest is in the field of cybersecurity. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for taking some time out to be on this podcast. It's a real pleasure to have you on the show. So tell me. How did you get into cybersecurity? Well, I got in in rather a different way, actually. So I went straight into cybersecurity by building my own business. So I originally came from an art, um, a design background. And um, really, technology, when it comes to, came to technology, I was a bit of a Luddite. But I was interested in it. I kind of saw it as a, a bit of a paintbrush, you know, so a very creative medium and a very dynamic kind of tool. And um, Mm. I'd always wanted to build my own business, you know, right from being a young girl and, you know, an opportunity presented itself. So I went into business with a partner. It was a technology business. And because I knew nothing really about technology, the the kind of areas that interested me were either AI or cybersecurity. And in those mm. days, you know, over 20 years ago, it was called IT security or information security. And I thought it sounded a bit mysterious. I thought it t- sounded really interesting and a little bit like James Bond. So <laughs> were you not intimidated? No, by no, I, field? no, I really I wasn't. I was very conscious of my age. So I was I thought, would I be taken seriously? Because I was going out there pitching, pitching for business. Um, so I, that was the thing that I was most conscious of. I, I really was oblivious to the fact that I was a woman operating in a man's world. That didn't even occur to me because I really didn't see any differences, you know, but what I did, I felt, um, very conscious that I was only in my twenties and it's just like, well, who would, yeah, who would, who would believe a 20 something? And I looked really young for my age as well. So it wasn't like I looked as if I was in my 30s or whatever. I've always looked quite young for my age. So you weren't suffering from what we all suffer from, which is kind of self-consciousness and what will people think then? Only from an age perspective, not from a not from a gender. Yeah, not from a gender perspective, just from age. And I was also very conscious that I didn't know anything about tech. But um, really what I always would do, you know, I'd be that hub. So it's just like I was completely transparent with the clients and prospects that I engaged with. And because I'm so committed to quality and delivering the best, you know, I would always get them the best. So it's just, it was always a case of if I don't know, then I'll find somebody who who does know. But what I kind of, as I kind of move through the industry, I would still operate like that now, but as I move through the industry, I felt uh, stupid. I felt stupid not knowing the answers um, to some of the questions. And I was working in a very tech, technological or uh, uh, tech driven area. When it came to security, it was particularly um, tech, technology driven. Mm. So how come you didn't cave under the pressure of not knowing and being unfamiliar with the industry? Because it really didn't to me, it didn't matter. So I was building my own business and the skills that I really needed uh, were 
Um, I needed a good a good team. So I needed great consultants. So I could, you know, if I was being asked the question, I could pull them in and they would be able to to give the answers to to my clients or prospective clients. I needed to build um, a team internally in terms of back end systems and things like that. So administrators, um, salespeople, sales support, marketing, um, you know, uh, systems administrators and things like that. I needed to be really good operationally. <laughs> operationally, um, I needed to be good from a marketing perspective. I needed to be good from a sales perspective. So those really were kind of areas that I needed to concentrate on. So from a tech perspective, all that matters, all that mattered was that I built and knew how to attract a great team and mm. make them happy when they were working for me and that they were delivering the results. Uh, they were actually delivering better results than my clients, you know, expected. Mm. I guess it, that's the difference between maybe starting from scratch with a STEM education versus coming from a more business angle then. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I also think I was, you know, I remember, I remember my business partner saying to me, um, you do know what you're getting yourself into, don't you, building a business? And of course, you know, being mid-20s or something like that, I said, yeah, 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 of course I do. You know, I knew absolutely nothing at all about it, um, but I was driven and I had a desire. And I think it was almost that naivety mm. and also being in your 20s when you're quite, I think in, when you're in your 20s, you're quite invincible. Yeah. You know, you, the world is your oyster, you can do anything. When you get older, then you start, you know, you, you've 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 had a lot of baggage yeah. along the way and you start to be knocked and then that starts to hurt and then your confidence can get chipped away. Whereas when you're young, it's just like, it doesn't really matter. You know, what's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm out there looking for a job. Yeah. Because you don't even have much either. It's not like you've much got... Much to lose. I mean, I did have... Yeah. I did have a child in those days, you know, so I did, I had started a family, wow. but I didn't have a mortgage, you know, I was renting. So I, I was a single parent, you know, renting a house. Um, that is so badass. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, I look, I do things topsy turvy. So I know it's just, I don't deliberately do that, um, go out to do that, but I kind of do things that the wrong way. And I probably have a higher risk appetite than a lot of people, um, not just not just women, because, you know, I'm very much of the belief that men and women see risk in a different mm. way. Um, and that's good. And it's great to be different. You know, we, we do a better job when we're different, when when we can pull in the strengths of diversity in all its forms, you know, not just gender. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I have quite a high risk appetite. I would say it's a measured appetite measured risk appetite but I also have fundamentally a lot of belief in myself you know to to do what I ask of myself and that's not an easy ride at all and it can be high pressure and you know I can be my worst critic as well as my biggest champion and, and savior um, but I do believe well in I must say the kind of courage and tenacity that you must have had at that young age fascinates me and is completely inspiring and I want to kind of climb into your head and understand where that all came from so can you take me on a journey of like what you were like as a little girl and your aspirations and how one decision led to another with your career yeah so I'm the eldest I've got a brother I'm the eldest of the two siblings there's not much in it at all between us um, we always grew up as best friends. So we traveled around the world a lot. You know, my father moved, um, he, he, he moved jobs and we moved countries and areas. So it could be quite tough, um, growing up. Uh, I had to look out for him. That was just naturally how I was and, uh, protect felt very much, you know, the older sister needing to protect him. And as kids, you go into schools, you go into different areas and you can be severely bullied and things like that. So I was very, I'm very much a big believer of, I don't like bullies. Don't, you know, if I encounter a bully now, it's not that I want to go in and save someone at all. It's just, I don't like it. I don't like discrimination at, yeah. at all. And um, so growing up, there was always that kind of challenge. So you had to learn to be tough 
and you because otherwise they get the better of you and you had to front it all front it out and um and you had to learn how to make friends easily so you could be accepted by by them so a lot of people skills you know i learned quite early on and i was always very i was never pushed as a child so i you know i'm a mom of three and you know, I've seen, I saw it when I was a child, you know, I see it now with sometimes very pushy parents, um, you know, having their children yeah. do this, that and the other. And I'm not judging them because it, it's their, it's their life. It's their children's life, their parenting as best they know how. But um, my parents were very good. I always worked really hard and I was always, I would say I was, I was reasonably smart, but I wasn't one of those really clever kids that didn't have to do any work my my oldest son is kind of like that and he does does have to work now but you know the the types of kids who are just they don't do any work and you always have those kids that will go in and sit an exam and they'll say oh I didn't do any work and they did you know that they did they was like swatting and revising for like ages and ages but then equally you get those really clever kids that haven't done any work and they just do really well well I always needed to do work so I I was always a worker but I, I'm of the belief if you set, I'm very fortunate because I have got a good brain, but if you set your mind to do something, then you can do anything. So I, I hold that as a core belief. You know, I raise my kids uh, with that belief. So it's just like, it's up to you. you. You need to be able to look yourself in the mirror every single day and say, I gave them my best. And if my best wasn't good enough, then I tried my hardest. Um, and next time, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do it or I'll try something different or maybe I'll mm. I'll move on to the to the next thing but you've got to be able to look yourself in the mirror and say I, I did the best that I could with the tools that I had available and and you knew that from a young age yeah 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 I did and also the other thing I think that was uh really helpful for me was I was quite I was quite sporty um and I was I you know some of the teams I'd be in at school I'd always try for them and things like that but also, and I think this is important. I I rode, so I I rode, I rode horses, and when you ride horses, there's something kind of special that happens. You fall off, you fall off all yeah. the time. You know, when you're learning, you fall off, you physically fall off, and you have to get back on, unless you're like put in hospital or anything like that. You have to get back on. So you mm-hmm. learn that principle of, yeah. you know, you fall off the horse, you know, dust yourself off, you know get back on and you've got to get back in the saddle ASAP you literally mm. within minutes and and it's literally like, yeah and it's like that out there you have to this is just how it is so I I did do that and I also did did compete and um and I think things like that you know I would I'd even when I was competing on you know on on horses that I that I rode you know I was lucky to get a horse when I was about 15 and I I you know, I just sold sold my soul to the devil in order to to get that. I was just like mad, and my parents weren't well off, but you know, we we managed to make it happen. And I worked, you know, to make that happen to to keep my horse and things like that. Um, but when you, when I rode as well, you know, I would be quite strategic with it. I knew the capability of my horse. I knew my own capability, and I would, you know, look at a competition and and work out how I could do it. You know, and maybe where I could. Uh, come in at and you know I'd assess the competition and things like that so and all of that you need to do in business you know so it's just applying the same kind of methodology in business a lot of the time and um, so I think things like that things like that really helped really helped helped me Mm. and also also I I think um, being open open to learning and I was very much a a self learner, so I I taught myself how to play the piano. I wasn't great at playing the piano, but I taught myself uh, from being you know very little, you know just with a book. So I've I've always had that as a as a discipline. If I want to do something, then I'll find a way to do it, and I'll 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 learn off my own back, you know, as well as learning from those around me. And so, in terms of choosing technology, I mean, were you a kid that thought, "Oh, maths and science and physics, and you know, that's my thing"? No, not at all. Um, maths actually wasn't my thing. <laughs> maths really wasn't my. It really wasn't. You know, I got my maths exams and things like that, but it wasn't a strength. So I was always brought up. You know, I'm the arty one, and my brother was more the science-based based one. Mm. 
and um and I was you know I was I was good at history and all of the arts based subjects and I was also very good at at, at art um so that was that was more my passion rather than technology and in my day it wasn't really about technology either technology was just starting to come in the the emphasis was on science mm. so it was all about science and even subjects you know if we were learning about cooking or something like that it wasn't called cookery or it was called domestic science mm. you know and it's just interesting i think you know i love words and i love language and still do and 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 there's huge power you know in language and communication and things like that but um technology was just kind of coming in really when i was when i was a kid and i was interested in it i was one of two two girls on my school that actually did you know stick their hand up and and move forward with with technology and i did a club so perhaps one um, of the reasons um, why you were able to go into something so highly technical um, and technology based was because it was a new frontier. Yeah, absolutely. And I do. I, I like change. So I, I really I love change and I I find it exciting. So it's that whole kind of. Um, yeah. It, it's it's moving. We're progressing. I like growing things. You know, I like change, you know, whether it's going to the hairdressers and seeing transformation or an interior design program or gardening or growing a plant or whatever, or people. I love to see mm. change and I've grown up with a lot of change and, and sometimes a lot of stress as well. But um, I've, I've grown up in that environment and I do really, really enjoy it. I find it exciting and I, I like uh, yeah, I like dynamic environments and I do like change so it's it's just it can be hard but it's it's fun it's interesting I must say that your approach to technology deeply fascinates me because I hear so many women at least kind of understanding the intimidation of STEM subjects whereas you were like well mm. you know it's kind of like that that attitude of getting back on the horse like it just doesn't seem to have phased you yeah, it, it it really didn't, and and it, it was an advantage, I think, getting in so yeah. so young, and and also, I mean, the other thing is, I did go to part of part with part of my education, I did go mm. to an all girls school, and when you go to an all girls school, you just you don't mm. see any differences. When I was about fifteen, I learned about them, and I I did have a brother, so it wasn't as if I I didn't have access to guys, um, but you're brought up in a kind of different way. You don't see any differences. And and that kind of, I think, built some strength strength in me because when I went out into the wild world, and, and also, also I'd say my parents brought me up with that belief mm. that, yeah, you can do anything. You know, my dad was very much like, yeah, fine, you know, go build that fence or, or whatever. And he still does things like that now. And it's just like, dad you know I've no desire to go and build a, a fence I'll get someone in to, to do that it's not a skill I want to you know, learn how to do um but there was never yeah. any obstacle as in that's girls work and that's boys work it was yeah we expect the same of of both of you and and um and and so my brother did dance you know so it wasn't as if we had this whole you know, in order to be a man, mm. you have to be macho and all of that. It, we were we were allowed to be who who yeah. we we were and are. Your parents sound like great role models, I must say. They are really they are really good. They I think like all parents, you know, they they do the best they can. Um, mm. You know, it's yeah, they they do the best that they can with what they got, and they are hugely supportive. Uh, my mum is mm. my mum is a huge champion, and she's absolutely amazing, and very very independent, and very strong willed, and um, and she can be my biggest critic, you know, as as well. I think I think often that's how how we can be as mums and dads and parents and things like that. And mm. and my dad has always been there to to support however he can, whether that's you know getting my maths up to speed, you know, for an exam when I was you know, little or helping me with my chemistry or physics. And, you know, he's he's been great. And also, you know, supporting my children as well when they've needed help. You know, mm. they, they've they been, yeah, they've been really amazing. I'm very, very lucky. Yeah. How 
has the way you've been raised um, influenced the way you raise your children? Oh, um, I, I, I've got high standards, you know, so I, I expect, I do expect a lot of them. Mm. Um, do you have daughters? I have one daughter. I have one daughter and two sons. So yes, I, yeah, high, high standards. And, and also part of my background was from education. So my mother's family were educators. And I think that plays um, a, a big part in how I grew up and how I parent my children. So education is, is very important in, in our family, mm -hmm. but not just in the academic, you know, the, the academic um, and getting the qualifications and things like that. That's important, but also getting the, the experience and, and learning from your mistakes and things like that, the kind of practical application as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and roll, rolling your hands up and, and, and getting dirty, you know, getting, getting in there. Yeah. And what was it like being in the minority in the sense that, you know, you must have been one of very few women in your industry? Yeah, well, I used it uh, to my advantage. So really, I was pretty oblivious to it. In some respects, I was oblivious to it. So it was very normal for me. So I didn't kind of see it. In terms of, say, discrimination and things like that, so being a minority, being a minority in an industry at that time, um, I didn't. I, most of the time, I didn't actually see it. So a few years ago, I remember being in Australia, and one of the guys I was talking to said, "You know, I remember seeing seeing you for the first time, and 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 realizing, you know, that there was a problem with a lack of women in the industry." And this was this was years ago. He said, "You know, the first presentation I did when I looked up into the audience, I was pretty nervous," and he said. All I saw, I only saw two women in the audience. And I said to him, I said, you know, what's really funny about that, though, um, with that particular event, I was I was unaware until now. So I didn't even notice it. I didn't realize that there weren't many women in the industry until actually quite late on. Mm. So it was just so very normal. It was just just a regular day. It's just how it was. But one thing That's that so I... amazing. I mean, yeah. did you not get, you know some kind of harassment or just you know did you get treated differently I mean to think that you didn't notice is really quite incredible yeah I didn't I didn't notice with things like that at events and things like that I was completely unaware because it was just so so normal but I I did also notice when it came to selling and things like that so it was very easy to be remembered because there really weren't any women in the industry and mm -hmm. I also remember when I met a female client, you know, and it was just like, oh my God, you know, oh my God, you're, you're a woman. It's like, <laughs> that's so cool. You know, because it literally, I remember operating in the industry for a good decade and I probably had two female clients, you know, that was, that was it, you know, and, and even like, it wasn't just two female clients. It was, they were the only women that I came into contact with, you know, in that, in that decade, you know, it was, um, it was it was really, really unusual for me to be dealing with, you know, speaking to, pitching to, liaising with from a, a project management perspective with with women. It really, really was. So and, and of course, because of that, well, not of course, but I, I did use that to my own advantage. So it was easy to be remembered because I was just mm. an abnormality. Do you think you were given special treatment in any way? Uh, no, no, I don't. And it actually, sometimes, sometimes I, well, no, not special as in good treatment. Um, sometimes I could get pushback. Yeah. But I remember the the older I got and the more experienced I got and the more um, sure I was of, of well, I'd always been quite sure of, of the capabilities of my company, you know, when I had the the hacking firm. But um, when I had that, that company, it was a case of we are, you know, with the dog's bollocks, you know, so we are so good. Um, and I, mm. I genuinely believed that. And I knew that we were, so I could push back. And I only worked with clients who I liked and, and got on with. So if there wasn't a client or a prospective client that I liked, it was just a case of, well, we're not going to do business because I don't like you. And being, mm. being the boss, it was, that was great. It was a good position. And, and, we had work, so we weren't desperate or anything like that. So we only did business, and it is the right way to do business. You know, only do business with, certainly when you're a fairly small 
company and you do and you do business with with people that you like you know it's a good way and then you work really hard for them and you know you you really care about them and and my company was very much a company where we really cared you know we wanted to do the best that we could and go the extra mile and and we knew that they would then spread the word so business would be much easier when that happened I'm wondering then whether you actually had that suit of armor because of your success and your experience of starting a business that you wanted to start. I mean, you you were driving this and that's what gave you your protection in an industry where you were surrounded by men. Yes, and and also I think I think so. It helped owning it. So I couldn't mm. really go wrong. You know, if I, I, I mean, I could go wrong, and I did go wrong loads, loads, and loads of times. But it wasn't a case of, well, I'm facing my boss, and what are they going to say, and am I going to lose my right. my job? It was, well, if you know, if I mess things up, then we don't have that client, or that could put us in a vulnerable position in terms of you know cash flow or money coming in and things like that. I didn't have, mm. I had my business partner to answer to and things like that, but it wasn't a case of answering to. I, I was the one, I was the one in in charge, and so therefore. It, it there just wasn't that failure aspect or I, I didn't feel vulnerable because, yeah. because of that and I think that makes a big difference in terms of that whole kind of suit of armor yeah I mean in terms of vulnerability because women do tend to be a little bit more vulnerable um compared to men if I yeah. can be so brave as to say that yeah. but did you find that um as a result that you were quite tough in the workplace uh yes I well I would say I was fair so I had boundaries mm-hmm. and 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 that's you know having clear boundaries is essential if you want to make if you want your team to perform and if you are creating a culture of psychological safety so the culture that I, I've always created everywhere that I've I've worked has been very much you know these are the boundaries. These are the rules. I'm here. I will have your back. I will support you. I will develop you. Um, I'll get the best out of you. And but it's a two way thing. So my expectations and my standards are high, and my team know that. And I will ask them to go the other mile for me and for the company and for for the mission. You know what we're doing yeah. because it's very much about you know this is what you know, the vision. You know your vision and mission and what your values are and you know how you gel together and it's all really exciting and great fun and you are one and uh you know you're gonna not rule the world or save the world or anything like that but you you know that's how that's how we operated you know very much you know with that whole belief and um but equally because i treated people fairly um i would get i would get you know a lot back because of that and sometimes I did have, you know, sometimes I did have to be tough. You know, I sometimes I did have to let people go. Um, sometimes I had to make people redundant when they were absolutely brilliant. And that was really hard, you know, when, when my company went through tough times. Um, so, but but again, it was easier because in, in lots of, in, I would say easier in lots of ways because it, because it was me having to do that. It wasn't a case of, and I, I know this happens with, with others out there where they are just told you've got to get rid of that person and no matter how much they'll fight for that person they have to get rid of them mm-hmm. and then that's hard because they take the brunt you know they take uh the fallout fr- from that and they are judged but sometimes it's not actually them making that decision some i can think of one particular friend i've i've got um and and she was she was given that you know you you if you don't do this you are sacked you know, and 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 that's really hard because she was she was judged and and but you know that's that's what you do as mm. leaders. It's dawning on me that the fact that you are so secure within yourself might be why you're so successful in security. Well, do you know what that is? I love it that you say that because this is what I see in security, <laughs> and it was a conversation that I was having today. I the the more secure that you are the better that you are going to do anyway. The better you know yourself, the better you know others, the better that you're going to do. And I'm always saying that to to my children. Um, But what I see in security is a deep insecurity. You know, I really do. And I think this, I think we have a lot of problems because there is so much insecurity in, in our field. 
We have a very hostile environment, um, not just in terms of externally with attackers, you know, coming in and stealing our data or manipulating the data um, or um, the errors that are created accidentally, but we have a very hostile environment in terms of the internal kind of um, environment. So who we're having to deal deal with and you know, that could be higher up in the organization uh, politically. Um, it could be that we're being used as a scapegoat, you know. So we have a very hostile environment outside, mm-hmm. you know, that we're trying to protect the organization from. And then inside in terms of ourselves, you know, mm-hmm. so it's it, it's very, very hard. And And because of that, the more secure that you can be, the more empowered that you can be, um, then the better that you are going to do. So take, for example, if we look at leaders in the industry right now, we many of them will only last in the industry for less than two years. And that could be because they've messed up or they're being used as a scapegoat or they realize that they can't actually do the job or the job wasn't what they were sold. So they move, move around. And when you're trying to combat issues, uh, there's not a lot that you can do in less than two years, you know, in terms of strategy and implementation. Mm-hmm. So, so definitely the, the stronger and more secure you are and more empowered that you are, I think the more able you are to move forward or even push back or even cope in the next job because you've been let go of. So mm-hmm. you've not, your confidence hasn't been knocked, which is it's so easy to do. Yeah. And it also really encourages this idea of living with integrity, because often integrity comes, what often comes with integrity is just an inner security with oneself. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And doing the right thing. Yeah. So it's that code code of conduct, isn't it? It's Mm. the integrity, the ethics, the code of conduct. You know, do you look the other way when something, when something happens? for for me i've i've experienced very little harassment you know i have had i have experienced trolling and, and things like that um quite severe trolling at one point and i do get people speaking out not necessarily agreeing with you know with with my mission mm. or what i write or, or say speak about um but i know so many women out in the industry who have and also sometimes men you know they they've seen things that have happened um, when it comes to toxic work environments or harassment at, at events and conferences and things like that, sometimes sexual, and uh, they, you know, those that there are those that don't look away and those that do speak up and those that step in and say that is not right for you to do, and sometimes I I know that they lose their jobs because of it, you know, because that's yeah. that's culturally not what the environment wants. So rather than actually get rid of the perpetrator, the the person who's spoken up about it, even if they are in a leadership position, even if they are performing, has been let go of. Mm. It's really tricky, isn't it? Um, trying to get that balance right, because I think it takes a certain type of personality to stand up for what they believe in. Some other people may stand up for what they believe in, but be continuously knocked down. And I'm trying to figure yeah. out what that golden ratio is um and 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 who it applies to um but it sounds like you've mm. really got it locked down i mean it, it, i wouldn't want to mess with you that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's yeah i mean i i've taken i've taken lots of yeah uh, the thing is it's like anything um you know the more you experience the better that you get mm. at it you know so but it it does come down to the resilience yes. so when you get knocked down um do you get back up that you know in in the UK we have this whole kind of weebles wobbles but they don't fall down you know these these toys that you know that didn't they wobbled but they didn't ever fall down mm. you know they got back up and you've kind of got to have that attitude it's just like right fine you know back on your feet yeah. you know and wasn't it Muhammad Ali that said something like, you know, sometimes you've got to be knocked down lower than you've ever been, you know, fall to your feet, you know, so that you can get up and be taller or higher mm. or better than you've ever been. And and it's it's very true. Yeah. I mean, sometimes the knocks that we get can make us fall so 
far down that it can be a real struggle to get back up. But I guess all, all your horse riding yeah. probably taught you that there is no situation that's too great to keep us down. Yeah, and and also it's that uh, it's temporary. I, it's you know I've been knocked to my knocked to the floor so low and used as a as a metaphorical punch bag. Um, Is that at work or personally? Oh, personally, right. personally, uh, yeah, yeah, and tested to my core, mm-hmm. absolutely tested, tested to my core, and. You know, I it was it was almost like you know here's here's a flame, here's a burning flame. In fact, here's a roaring fire, fire, and this little fire is almost out. You know, the flame is flickering, and um, at that point, I knew that I needed to get help because it's just like I can't. I I need someone to fan these flames, and you know, I I I need to go and get help. And the mind is so incredibly powerful and so amazing in terms of what it can do and what you can achieve in the innovation and the creativity etc cetera, etc cetera, mm. and so destructive and um and it can create these crazy stories that you believe and um you know certainly for for me having such an internal belief yeah you know i i can do anything that i put my mind to to do certainly when i was in that state i i knew that i needed to go and get help mm. and uh, and that involved rewriting stories you know that I'd written that were untruths and it is when you actually when you go through that process um and then you you heal as well so you you heal and then you can look back and you know then it's just a case of my god you know I was so lucky and you know when I hear about suicides and things like that it absolutely hurts so much because they didn't rewrite their story they didn't rewrite Mm -hmm. and and also the people around them you know, didn't see it. And it's just so tragic. Mm. And I think anyone who's, who's ever come close to those dark, you know, having those dark days, you know, it's like, whoa, you know, it's just the mind is, is very powerful. So, so it's learning, it's learning the, the tools and techniques that are around us, you know, to keep yourself strong so that when you go through these periods, because we're all, we're, all of us are going to go through periods, you know, these tough periods yeah. in our in our lives so that we know what tools that we can use to keep ourselves strong. And it doesn't, you know, I, I always say you come to your own, you come to your own rescue. You have to be the superhero. You have to be maybe not even a superhero, but you have to come to your aid. But you also by with me saying that, that also means that by coming to your aid, you also have to be able to use other people around you. That's part mm. of it. You know, so there's a lot that you can do, but you need to be able to turn to other people as well to help you come to your own aid. Right. So did you have that team of people, that support network, or is that something that you cobbled together in desperation? No, I've 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 had it. So I, I'm very I'm a very loyal person and I believe in relationships. So I always take care always taken care of the relationships because I value people. So I've, I've always taken care of, of the relationships and it's part of the whole, it's part of, you know, who, who I am. And some people might call it personal branding and things like that. It's just, I remember my father bringing me up, you know, to, with the, he always said, yeah, I remember him saying like, look at the dog. We had this really great dog. She was just an amazing dog and she was friendly with everyone, but she was a really good guard dog as well. This, um, and he said, look at how she approaches people. She approaches people with a great big waggy tail, like it's happy face and everyone, even if they were frightened of dogs, they will love this dog. And it's part of that. It's part of the experience. How do people experience you? You know, is, is your word good? Do you do what you say? Are you friendly? Are you considerate? Do you treat people how you want to be treated? Do you value people? Do you value your relationships? What is the experience mm-hmm. of you? And... um and and so I've always... we often don't ask ourselves that we're always pointing the finger at others going they treated me like this and that right. they said this and that exactly. we don't look at ourselves well this is it and that's also disempowering so it's that is playing victim and you know there there's something called the drama triangle the drama triangle has victim perpetrator and rescuer and um, certainly when you play the victim, you can move in to be perpetrator, sometimes rescuer, but you, you're in a, in a position of disempowerment. You, know, you really are. So that's why 
you have because you're not taking responsibility exactly yeah responsibility accountability you know so don't you know and I'll say this I'm saying this to my son actually just the other day it's you know don't give me don't give me that you know don't blame me for something Mm. if you are feeling that it's because you are in charge of your feelings not me wow you know so it's just like again teaching him to take that responsibility for himself and we we as leaders out there you know need need to take that on board ourselves so so that we can be empowered so that we can be strong strong in our core um and then play that forward so it's just like culturally this is how how we are yes if you've got a problem you can come come to me um you know and and, and talk to me about it but i need you to to look at this and i need you to come you know with maybe a solution or at least to have thought about a solution or to ask for help which again is something that so many of us particularly i would say i i would say particularly women um because maybe we can be judged more harshly in the workplace if we do ask for help we're we're expected to be you know invincible or these super women exactly i know people notice when we're not you know so it's just like for women ask the question do they notice you know if a man doesn't ask if a man asks the question do they judge them in the same way you know, you're always going to be judging a minority um, d- differently, and you know everyone's subjected to biases and things like that. So, yeah, it doesn't sound like you've been a victim much in your life. But if you were feeling a bit like you're being treated like a victim, um, what are the things that run through your head to pull you out of that? Oh well, I will do, and I have been a victim at, at uh, various points in my life, and I didn't understand, you know. So one, it's there's a lot of awareness. So, um, yeah, and, and moving through kind of grief, really. So moving through, um, yeah, move, moving through the healing kind of process and grieving process, and there is a process to that. So understanding that um, is really useful, and it's El- Elizabeth Kubler, um, uh, she the change. Uh, I think it's a change module. You can, I think it's Elizabeth Kubler Ross. You know, had had that. So it's really good to understand what what that process um, is. But I will often, if I'm in that, um, I'll do gratitude. So it's just like um, just run through how grateful I am. So thank you for my life. You know, thank you for all the things that I have in my life. And I'll just change my state. So I'll get into a different mm. state. So it's I'll run through my gratitude list. Um, sometimes if I'm able to, I can get get out, you know, get out into nature. So that often helps me get get a better perspective. Sometimes exercising, get those endorphins in, you know, move my body, shake it out of my body and um, sometimes where it can be sitting. Um, in being aware of where it can sit, you know, this like this feeling more of disempowerment or or I am the victim, you know, in the sorry state that you're in and like, pull me, pull me, totally Mm -hmm. disempowered. So, um, yeah, and and then you can journal. So sometimes, uh, you know, journaling, journaling is a great exercise as well. And it's it's very useful in terms of what you can uncover. So often, sometimes what I find when I journal is that I get the answer myself. So I start to parent myself like a good parent would or like a best friend would you know so rather than being you know this critic um and being very hard on yourself you Mm. know you actually turn it turn it around be there for yourself exactly and nurture nurture yourself um Mm. so things things like those things you know can can help you know some people might use other mediums some people might draw or write or sing or um you know sometimes you have to go and see see a, a therapist you know to to get a clearer picture and, and rewrite some of the stories mm-hmm. that you're thinking but I usually work through the, the gratitude first and change my state yeah I mean that's just so incredibly powerful is the fact that you can literally flip your attitude on its head exactly yeah you can you really can and just the gratitude you know when you when you examine it and you don't even have to do it from a comparison like you know sometimes it can be a case of well think you know you think you've got it bad well my goodness you know look at what's going on over there I mean that's horrific 
I don't even do that. It's it's literally walking myself through, you know, what I'm grateful for. And that can go on for a long time, you know, so it's like breaking it down, you know, breaking it down. I'm grateful for 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 having two legs that work, you know, that walk, you know, that work, you know, having a body, you know, being able to see, having a breath. Going you know, back to basics. Going back to basics and running, running through, you know, thank you for my children. Thank you for my health. You know, thank you for the, it's just, there's just so much. And that often, that often helps you to, to get into a different state and to see things in, in a different, if a different mm. manner. Gosh, I wish I could bottle your attitude and just get drunk on it. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. just, it feels yeah. so strong and um, bulletproof. Um, and I think, you know, given, even my experience, but also the experiences of other women on this podcast, you know, it can be really mm-hmm. tough um, striking a balance between standing up for yourself, being there for yourself, you know, being tough, but also kind. What kind of words of advice do yes, you have yeah. on striking that balance? with yourself or with with others others, because when you were saying earlier about kind of being in the workplace and standing up for yourself you know in my experience when I've stood up for myself I've kind of been shot down to an even greater degree because I've got the tenacity to stand up for myself it's like you know you invite sort of bigger bullets being thrown at you yes well I would say it's always good to do it from when you have when you have, when you don't need the job, mm. then it's easy. You know, when you, when you do need the job, then it's it's harder. So that's also why it's great to have options available to you and building your network really helps. So yeah, I, I, for example, I can give you, I'm thinking of a, a, a story that a friend of mine um, told me the other day. Now she's, she's been, uh, she's of a similar age to me. Um, she's just joined cybersecurity. She's come from a very tech um, upbringing. She also used to own her own business. Um, so she's got, you know, she's graduated in in technology, coder, yeah, program manager, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, lots and lots of Exactly. Yeah, I'm very technical as well. So she's come into cybersecurity and she's experienced uh, knockbacks and uh, attitudes from, from men. Um, in 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 her, in her new working environment she works for for one of the big consultancies and um and she stood her ground and she has um really pushed back and she's told told uh say the personal people so she's not only st- uh, stood her ground for herself and for her own work and the quality of it but she's also had the back of those around mm-hmm. her and some of the younger women as as well so she pushed push back and she's told um, you know, people that she's been working with, that their manner insults her and uh, how dare they. And, uh, you know, so she's really pushed back. But she said, she said to me, she kind yeah. of laughed and she said, my God, I'm sure I'm going to be sacked. You know, I'm sure I'm going to be sacked. She said, I don't, I, I, I want the job and I don't want to be sacked, but luckily I don't need it. And um, it's, that is, that gives you strength. Because when you have options and you don't really need it, and we're not always in that position, then you can actually stand your corner and you can say, No, that is, you know, don't treat me like that. I will not be spoken to like that. Or no, I'm not going to do that. Or that's that this type of behavior is not right. Um, And I've witnessed it and seen it. So I think having having that and that's where, you know, you do your networking and you make sure that people know about you and how amazing, amazing you are really helps because it allows you to be or enables you to have choices and, and to not be so desperate for for that job um Mm. I think that also ties into gratitude as well because I think sometimes um well the women in STEM I've met they're always striving to be more and more and more and more and if you are if you've pushed yourself so hard to get that dream job that you then compromise yourself in being at the mercy of it yeah yeah absolutely I I would agree it's it's in those situations, it, it's it's really tough. I also think energy-wise, and you know how you how you're communicating from your body language plays a big part. You know, so what energy are you giving giving off, and and being aware of that. You know, so say for 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 me, the way that I people will say, "Are you really confident?" and things like that, and it's 
it's just like, well, in some cases, yes, I am really confident. And in lots of cases, I'm not. But I give the impression that I am. And I probably have uh, an impression, don't mess with me. You know, so that from an energy perspective, it's mm. just like, don't don't mess with me. Don't push it mm. uh, because, you know, all hell will break loose. Um, and I've always I've always um, I'm, I'm always that person that, yeah, if it, if it means I lose my and job because I've, I've stood up and said that's not mm. right. I, I, I'm quite happy. Yeah, it, it's the right thing to do. So so it's energy wise and being aware of how you communicate, how your how what your energy is like when you put it out there. Um, is is really important and I think you can lessen things um, by Mm. being by being aware of that and using those using those as tools using those as 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 tools and being I think we'll say like facing your fears being less afraid so it's just like so what so what if you're going to do what are you going to do you're going to have what you're going to like reprimand me you're going to sack me so what I'll go and get another job and it's almost it's that falling off the horse again. Exactly. Thing, it? And it's it's so easy to say and everything like that. And when you're in the moment, or sometimes it can be like, I cannot believe that he's just, or sometimes if it's a she, you know, to that person's just actually said that to me or done that. That's just like, whoa. And it, it, it can take you by surprise. But I remember also talking to to one woman, a VP at a big company, and she said, you know, where when she encountered hostility or pushback or discrimination gender discrimination when she was younger she used to try and work with it and uh, she said the older that I got the more I just if I couldn't change it she said I'd just leave it'd be like fine I'm in demand I can get a good job I can actually get a pay increase and I can move to that environment if I can't do what I need to do here and I'm encountering this hostility and this pushback a lot of which is based on my gender then I'm off and so she, she's, that's what she did. She said, I've had about 11 jobs in my time. Sure. And if that's the situation, the older I get, the faster I move. So, and I, I, I just, I found that really interesting. And mm-hmm. I actually think, yeah, and I think that's the right thing to do. If you can't become that person that you need to be, if it doesn't make you happy, then you need to move. You need to yeah. go. And it circles back to that inner security again, because it's really just having this profound sense that you'll be all right no matter what. Exactly. It's like having that belief, everything is going to be okay. Mm. But you do have to, you have to pick your, you have to pick your battles. Mm. And you, I think, always have to try and understand, I think, approach things from, not from a defensive perspective, but try and understand things from, from their perspective and to, to make friends, yeah. you know, with as many people as, as you can, because particularly, I think when you are going to speak out about things. So I'm I'm quite vocal in my in my industry, and I speak out a lot, and I also act as a voice for many people who can't yeah. um, and say things that need to be said. Um, I am respected more probably because a lot of my message is all about doing this together. So whilst I'm a big champion for women women in security. Um, and doing the right thing, it's um, I'm very much about to progress. We need to do this together. We need to build the bridges, um, and we evolve by working to, together. Um, so, and I get a lot of um, buy-in because of that. And I'm I'm very much men aren't the problem. Um, the system, the they're problem. not. Yeah, men aren't the problem. The system is the is the problem. Yeah. So men are the answer. So we, in order to to solve the issues, we have to we have to do a really good uh, get the buy in from the guys and and bring them with us and give them a part to play and help them feel less threatened. Um, but we've got to, Gosh. yeah, yeah. I love that so much. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. the only way, and we ha- we have mm-hmm. to. So that's that's why that's why you know I kind of work with both both groups. You know, teaching women how to build their stamina and their resilience and their core strength and go out there. And it's just like, you go, you go do it. You're excellent. Don't ever question your ability. 
you know, to, to be in this industry, you are most likely working working twice as hard, if not 10 times as hard as, as any man. And you are so bloody able. So don't ever, ever question that. You know, that's just that's just lunacy. So, you know, and that's the way to look at it. And yeah. if any, anyone ever says that, it's laughable. You know, so it's just, um, but it's equally helping the guys to, to often see the the error of, of their ways and mm. and things that aren't intentional um yeah but that that can do harm when they are trying to, trying to help and often those can be the words that they they're using well on that note in the few minutes that we have left what has it been like juggling three children and being a total trailblazer in the technology field uh, really hard <laughs> it's been, yeah really it's been really hard it's it, it and it still is you know right now it's it's really particularly hard so yes you know I am being a mum is is my number one job uh it's it, you know it's family first uh, but equally you've got to pay the bills and everything like that and I do really care so a lot of the things that I do come from that deep place of, of care and I'm obsessed and compelled and I can't stop myself uh, from from helping um, really the, our industry and um, yes yeah, so it is really tricky and I've wanted I haven't I haven't um, had nannies or anything like oh that or, or help yeah so I haven't because I've wanted that's been sometimes that's been a financial choice uh, because I've not been in a position to so building a, a business and things like that uh, you know everything goes into the business so you're often the the worst paid employee mm -hmm. And um, and and also I wanted to be there, so I wanted to be able to show up, you know, to my kids' performances and things like that. So and I wanted to take them to to school again, my choice, um, and that's why I've had my own business. You know, it's it's been able to, I've been able to do that with my own business. You know, the only thing that matters when you have a business is serving your clients. So if I can get all that done and serve my clients, then I then I win. But it is hard, and you don't have a lot of time left for for yourself or for your friends or family and things like that sometimes and it's a juggling act and it it's you know that that balance that work life balance you know will will swing sometimes it's like say you for me right now right now it's it's pretty much all family and there's only a tiny bit of work that that I can do right in this moment but that time will pass and then it will swing so then it'll go back to like okay right fine full blast ahead on the work front and maybe less on the family so we're living and breathing so it's it's going to move and this whole kind of notion of work-life balance and trying to get it right there is no balance it moves and when I discovered that not that long ago I suddenly thought oh my god I've been chasing this unicorn you know it's it's impossible and now I feel better because I know it's 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 unattainable you know, so and and then realizing that I'm living and breathing. So, of course, it's going to shift. That's just how it is. So and that helps from a from a guilt perspective and from a don't beat yourself up because no, no one, no one can achieve that. So you can't achieve it. And we do have this tendency to beat ourselves up more as as women and and particularly as as mothers, I think, out there working because we judge ourselves, we judge ourselves based on on our upbringing, and also we're conscious of others judge us as, as well. So yeah, it's 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 uh, it's it's tricky, it's hard, but it is totally possible. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally and if totally there's possible. one woman, that's so it's really a sh shining example of you know really achieving that balancing act. It's you. I mean, I I honestly feel gobsmacked at uh, hearing the embodiment of strength and tenacity and self-belief and self-acceptance but also huge amounts of self-compassion I mean it's just been so inspiring yeah. talking to you oh thank you and also I, I want to I want to add that I'm a single parent as well so it's just and and the reason I say that is because all of this is possible so it's just we're often limited, you know, constricted um, by ourselves. You know, sometimes we need to get out of our own way and it's the limiting beliefs that hold us back more than anything. You know, so it's just, you know, what I want is, is for people to understand, women to understand that 
the world is your oyster. You're in this industry. My goodness, you're in technology or STEM. Wow, you have the world at your oyster. Everything is possible to you. Never, ever before in the history of our time have you had so much. You have communication, support, networks. You have everything at your fingertips. You can do it. You really, really can do it. And that's, I think, what I want to show. It's just like bullshit to to the limiting beliefs. That's a limiting belief. You know, just that is not, you know, charge yourself up find a way because there is a way for you to do this it is totally story. possible for you to do that uh it's been amazing listening to your story this week on silence my gosh thank you so much for coming on the show i feel like crying with joy listening to you thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much for all the work that you do as well because this show is absolutely amazing so thank you That's it from my STEM guest this week. I literally have tears in my eyes listening to my guest. What an incredible woman. I mean, I just have no words. She said so much in this hour and I feel like I've grown wings and I have this massive smile on my face. I feel like I also need some time to let everything she said land because my gosh, I can't believe the words of wisdom today. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to rate and review the show and catch you next week on Silence. Thank you.